what up mga kapelo growers natin mga hydroponic growers dyan uh, ito na naman tayo sa ating update sa ating uh, uh, greenhouse uh, it's has been uh, 15 days na po guys mula ng ating ilipat tong ating pakchoy at ayan na siya 15 days after 2 weeks pwede na siyang ma-harvest ma guys ganun lang kadali guys ayan sa so, ating nasa tracking method nasa styro box ayan itanyan tanyan nyo naman lumalapad na yung kanyang dahon 2 weeks na lang guys at na-harvest na ulit tayo ito naman ang ating ah Chinese Chinese kangkong ayan makapal-kapal na siya at ang ating sili kaya na sabi ko nung nakaraan first time kong magtanin ng sili ayan marami na siyang dahon dahon lang po ang habol natin dyan para sa ating tinola dahil walang binibentang dahon dito sa Middle East ayan kapal na ang dahon niya kasunod pwede na tayo magtinola ng manok, meron na tayong pang halong dahon ng fresh na dahon ng sili kaya yeah, yun guys mga ka growers dyan napakabilis po ng paglago ng ating pananim in just 2 weeks makakabenta na tayo ulit at marami nang nag-aabang marami nang nag-message sa akin sa messenger mga dati nating suki na din na naghahanap ng pechay lalong lalo na eh December na ilang tulog na lang, Pasko na uh, mabati nga pala kayo sa inyo ng advance Merry Christmas guys maraming salamat sa patuloy na panunod sa ating channel Asus TV at ayan, kung gusto nyong pagumpisa mag hydroponic farming lalo ngayong pandemic maraming maraming naingan nyo dito mag venture sa business na to hydroponic farming sa Pilipinas ang dami eh, dahil nga mabentang mabenta ngayon yung sa atin yung lettuce ang lakas ng demand sa lettuce ngayon guys kaya ang dami nyo yung lalo nitong pandemic maraming nag-venture sa business na hydroponic farming nagtatanim sila ng lettuce at saka yung anong tawag doon? yung pipino uh, yan ang mga tinatanim nila at saka pechay na din number one, lettuce ang daming customer sa lettuce ang laki ng market sa lettuce lalo na yung mga hotel mga Korean restaurant na gumagamit ng lettuce so kung plan nyo guys na mag-venture sa business ng pag-hydroponic or plan nyo lang na gawin lang ha, sa home growers para sa pang sariling kusumo uh, may mga bagay na kailangan i-consider lalong lalo na kung gagawin mo siyang pang negosyo may mga bagay na need to consider at saka planning at uh, na dapat mo munang pag-isipan at i-prepare bago ka mag-start nito Uh, let's listen to our to some of the successful na dito sa business na to uh, panoorin natin sa next video na to ang mga, masasa, ang mga masasabi ng mga naging successful na sa pag uh, vertical farming or hydroponic farming tara pakinggan natin sila ang mga tips nila sa atin ng mga beginners na mag hydroponic farming. Tara guys. Stay tuned. First of all, you need to be convinced about why you want to do it. That's the most important thing. If, if you're not even convinced about why, forget about it. You need for yourself to define how you're going to do it. 
write the business plan. It's not about it's not about having a business plan. It's about having a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're screwed. Because you're gonna run around, spend your money, and then you need a plan. Have a strategy. A strategy can be very easy, but you need to have the plan. Okay, how are we going to get to a point where this is a business? Because I mean, farming you can do farming as a hobby, which is fine. But then you need another job to sustain the hobby. If you want it, your farming to become your livelihood, you need to have a plan. And then you just need to go for it because you like doing it. And you know why you want to be doing it. Then you just need to go, 100%. I think what I would say is that you need to see this experience as a, a bit of a, 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 experience of life a little bit you need to see it like that that it will teach you so many things about yourself and um, it brings you a lot of things uh, to learn that it will be tough <laughs> but if you see tough as a good way of growing then then it's interesting I think mm. and um, yeah that's what I would that's what I would say and that you feel that I don't know you're in something that's that's growing a little bit. It's cool to feel that you're not alone doing mushrooms, and I like to hear that there are other projects and stuff because, uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a cool, cool thing to do. You're part of something. Yeah, we are part of. A, I mean, I know this is the future. Not only urban farming, but uh, farming in organic farming. I would say, you know, yeah. doing some. Yeah. Just, just go for it. There's something I want to add. When we arrived in France, you know, French people, I, I did my thesis about uh, French people versus American people and how they behave in different situations. And the French people way of doing things is they don't like risks. Okay, so they spend a huge amount of time and sometimes money to evaluate the risk before doing anything. You know, they're like, oh, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this because of that. Let's calculate it. And when in the end they do something, 10 people have done it before them. And, uh, and you know, in the American and Argentinian way of doing it, it's like, just go for it. You do it, and then you think of what you shouldn't have done. And then you change those things. But you're already a step ahead, like 10 step ahead from the French guy. So when we arrived here, we were like, should we do it the French way or the Argentine way? And obviously we did the Argentine way. <laughs> and, and it was great because it was not supposed to work. Everything that we done, if you follow the books, it was not supposed to work. And we just did it how we felt it would be good good and, and it worked so just follow your instincts and just do it if somebody who wants to start CSA uh, farm they have to check and make sure they have to do some kind of research uh, market research in the village or in the area where they are if they have land already um, and but then if they have enough if they are able to have enough members and you can get your members long before you you start your CSA farm you can st you can first start building a list of uh, of your members and make sure that you have enough members and then starting the farm is in fact peanuts you, you there's a lot of examples uh, of other CSA farmers in, uh, in Flanders who have done it you can go and ask for help uh, we, the CSA network provides help so it's just a, the, uh, just a question of getting a group of people that are willing to come and buy uh, food from you and do this uh, year after year and then uh, the next steps are easy in fact I would say mm. if you have a little bit clean fingers uh. il faut faire ce qu'on a envie de faire et en étant enfin il faut prendre du plaisir à faire ce qu'on fait c'est ça c'est la philosophie plus importante je pense ouais ouais tu es d'accord je suis d'accord to become a farmer in general, yeah, try to be autonomous. Try not to be uh, bonded to uh, big uh, yeah, loans or, or financers or, or people that buy your stuff. Uh, try to yeah, be as autonomous as possible. And that for me means that you operate um, in a local environment. Um, autonomous but also like um, connected with, uh, with the community, with the local community. Try to do it local, keep it small, yeah, these kind of keywords. 
and try to get a fair price. <laughs> <laughs> what would you teach every uh, new urban or vertical farmer or someone who wants to get into it? Uh, I think the most important thing is to plan ahead. I think uh, it's very important for you to know who you're selling your products to. I think it's very easy for us to get caught up in all the technicalities like uh, the hardware I'm going to choose, the LEDs, the, the areas, but is it profitable? I mean, have you really did your number, did you do your numbers, did you find partners to sell your products to? I mean, what are they going to buy from you? Is it lettuce, is it microgreens, is it mixed salads? Uh, I think the first thing is to know who's going to buy your products, what you're interested in, what are the volumes, and that will dictate the technology, the area, and everything else that you're going to, to build, it's going to grow on that basis. So I think that's very important. Obviously, uh, you don't have to, to marry the first person you, you meet, obviously. I mean, you're not, you're not get, like, getting a um, uh, distributor for life or anything like that. Uh, but you should definitely know what you're selling. Obviously, you, you don't need to get a distributor. You could sell your own stuff. You could, you could also have your own shop integrated into your warehouse or whatever. But I think it's very important to know your markets. And I, I think a lot of people failing in that regard. They start planning their, their, the, the size of the warehouse, the, the brand of LEDs, the, the controller, the sensors, and they still have no idea what they're going to grow, who's going to buy the products. I would say that um, if you're going to get into this, really think about what it is that you're actually trying to do and understand that if, if you, you know, that the implication that you're just going to help people somehow isn't necessarily going to happen if, you know, your financing thesis and values are not in line with that social welfare piece. You know, every piece of the puzzle needs to be aligned on that value set. Um, a lot of people talk about the value of this, but in the end, um, it's driven by, you know, you know, personal benefit, um, and not necessarily about a whole or a, a more holistic approach to, you know, local economic development or, you know, living economies, local living economies, or whatever you want to say. If 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 you're trying to build you know, a vertical farming empire, then say that. Don't sugarcoat it. Um, so, you know, for those who are interested in getting into this, I would say, I would just caution them in that it's a slippery slope if you're not careful and realistic or at least knowledgeable about what this, you know, tech boom means. For society and what it means for for disadvantaged populations, if you're not in tune with the effects of raising huge amounts of capital and blowing that, um, but you still think that you're doing something good, you need a reality check. So um, just be aware of that.